It was a chaotic night in downtown Minneapolis. Eight people were shot at Boom Island. Several are in critical condition. Right now, Minneapolis Mayor Jacob Fry and Interim Police Chief Amelia Huffman are speaking about the concerns over violence. Let's go there now. Wanted to address some of the events that took place last night. Uh, the recklessness and callous disregard for residents in our city uh, put a damper and a stain on a weekend that should otherwise be celebrated. Normally, uh, we can expect difficult events and circumstances to take place on Friday and Saturday leading into a holiday weekend like this. Uh, in this case, uh, it stemmed towards Monday. This is conduct that should not be acceptable in any city. The kind of violence, the recklessness, and in some cases idiotic behavior that we saw shouldn't be tolerated, and let me be clear, it won't be tolerated. People in our city deserve to feel safe, regardless of what neighborhood you live in. We need to make sure that we're holding the perpetrators of these violent crimes accountable, we need to make sure that youth have good and beneficial recreational activities to engage in. Uh, and we need to make sure that a weekend, a national holiday, our nation's birthday that should be celebrated is able to be celebrated. I want to be clear with the difference in jurisdictions uh, that have been involved in some of both the preparations as well as the response leading into last night. Uh, the shooting that happened over at Boom Island uh, is being investigated presently by the Park Board, uh, but we are working hand-in-hand hand with them. Uh, similarly, uh, the events that took, over, that took place over at the Stone Arch Bridge are also in the hand of the Park Board, uh, while we in the MPD and at the city uh, are investigating a combination of what happened at Gold Medal Park as well as what happened in the Mill District. You know, this is our city. We live here. We work here. We have families here and our futures are here. And while we have seen some really tragic events happening in so many other cities throughout our country uh, over the last weekend and, to be frank, over the last several months, uh, whether it's Kenosha or Chicago, uh, whether it's Sacramento or Highland Park, we live here. We care about Minneapolis. We believe in this city, uh, and it's up to us to make sure that we're doing everything that we possibly can to curb some of this recklessness and the violence that we've seen. Now, I want to be clear, it's on all of us. It's on our police department to make sure that they are strategizing uh, every possible way to make sure that we are both holding perpetrators of violent crime accountable, that we are responding in a timely fashion and we're gathering the necessary intelligence ahead of time so we can suss out some of these problematic situations before they happen. It's on our 911 call center to make sure that they are both properly staffed and are ready to go. Uh, it's on our fire department to make sure that they're working collaboratively with these other entities. And I should note that in the very, very near future, uh, we're talking about in the next week, uh, we intend to be bringing on a commissioner for the Office of Community Safety that will help us provide that comprehensive approach. This is no small task, and it will take more than our office. It'll take more than the MPD working on these issues. It has to be a collaborative and comprehensive approach, and that is exactly what we're going to be moving towards. This conduct is unacceptable, and I can say it a thousand times over. Uh, and while we have a job to do at the city, I also want to say that it's on all of us throughout community as well. If you're the parents of children that were out last night, you need to know where they are. If you have friends that were involved in some of this horrible conduct, you need to be setting them straight. This is on all of us to be doing right by our city, and part of doing right by our city is holding one another accountable. That means holding us accountable here. It also means making sure that people, whether they're doing shootings or blasting off fireworks in a residential area, they need to be held accountable too. This kind of garbage cannot be tolerated in any city, and it's our job to make sure that it doesn't take place here in Minneapolis. 
I believe in this city. I believe in the power of what we can do when we work together. The bottom line is that we are better than this. And we need to make sure that we're showing the world that we are. So we're going to get into some of the specifics and the details uh, as I hand it over to our interim chief, Amelia Huffman. Uh, what I will say, and she will reiterate, is a lot of what happened last night is already under investigation. Uh, and so we're not going to be able to relay all of the details that we have at this moment. Um, uh, but we will uh, as soon as we get them in. Uh, so with that, I will turn it over to the chief. Uh, she'll discuss our, our deputy chief. Uh, Eric Forbes is going to be discussing some of the timeline and the circumstances that our MPD experienced last night, which, as he will reiterate, was a, a substantial case of whack-a-mole. Um, there were hundreds of people that were gathered at a number of different uh, unplanned, unsanctioned events uh, that required the full strength of what we had uh, on duty at the time and more so. I couldn't agree with more with everything that Mayor Fry has said today. I won't belabor his points, except to point out that on a holiday where we're meant to remember and celebrate the truly revolutionary ideal that every person has the inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, there were those in our community who chose to engage in destructive, damaging, and dangerous behavior that deprived others of those very rights. Once again, we're here in this room to talk about guns in the hands of those who would use them to do harm. MPD officers, park officers, and the University of Minnesota Police Department officers responded to multiple incidents last night around three significant areas that involved gunfire and fireworks that were being shot off, specifically towards property, towards residents, towards community members, and when they arrived, toward officers. As you can imagine, this was an extremely challenging situation with a very large and hostile crowd, and the primary response by the officers was to restore order using the least amount of force necessary. The park police continue to follow up on investigations, primarily that of the individuals who were injured by gunfire at Boom Island Park, and they will have updates on their investigation in coming days. The Minneapolis Police Department is investigating a report of one individual who was injured by gunfire at Gold Medal Park, and we will have updates on this investigation in coming days as well. Over the course of last evening, between 9 p.m. and 4 a.m., there were more than 1,300 911 calls for service received at MECC. Our 80 plus MPD officers who were on duty responded not only to these reports of the destructive, damaging, dangerous gunfire and fireworks along the riverfront area, but other kinds of calls as well. Medical calls, domestic assaults, fights, overdoses, other sorts of medical calls throughout the city. Those 1,300 plus 911 calls for service are the same number of calls generated in a full 24 hour period just earlier this spring. As the chief uh, reiterated, uh, we had a significant number of events that were, uh, I would characterize as unsanctioned and unplanned and also coupled with uh, complex violent crime scenes that uh, required our personnel to have to divide a lot of their attention and be uh, extraordinarily uh, diligent in how we responded. And in order to, to put that into perspective, I'll, I'll relay a little bit of what some of our officers experienced. This is not uh, a completely comprehensive, but uh, an idea of uh, the number of calls and and events that went on in a short period of time. Around uh, nine, shortly before 10 o'clock at about 9.56, uh, officers from both uh, Park and uh, MPD uh, responded into the area of the Stone Arch Bridge uh, on the southeast side with a report of a large gathering uh, in the park and, and in the area. We responded to, uh, to 
check that out and to respond to reports of fireworks being fired. At about 10.15 that evening, now uh, across the river at Mill Ruins Park, uh, the park police uh, was attempting to close down the parking lots and were reporting there were hundreds of people uh, and they were launching fireworks at people in squads and refusing to leave. That required uh, a large response from the park police to begin to address. Uh, elsewhere in the city, at 10.20, uh, we had a shooting with, with two people who were uh, injured. To manage that scene required us to send seven squads. At 11, shortly after 11, at around 11.12, uh, officers from both uh, the Minneapolis Police Department and the University of Minnesota Police were addressing a large group that were lighting fireworks in the area of Main Street Southeast, and again in the Stone Arch Bridge area. This group was reported as being uncooperative and resistant to leaving the area. In order to address this, we had to send eight MPD squads, and the U of M Police responded with six. While we were dealing with that situation, Shortly after that, at 11.30, the shooting came out at Boom Island Park with a report of multiple victims and hundreds of people who were gathered in the park. This is a, a complex situation. This requires a lot of uniform response and is considered a very serious life safety event. All in all, 11 Minneapolis police and nine park police squads responded to this call and the scene. While this was going on, uh, we were trying to mitigate the crowd at Boom Island, uh, trying to address the uh, victims and the crime scene at Boom Island. There was still a crowd that was gathering in the area of uh, Main Street Southeast and 2nd Street Southeast, and there was also crowds that were causing issues on the downtown side of the river, both at Mill Runes Park uh, and down, all the way down to uh, Gold Metal Park. At around 11.57, we had reports of fireworks and disturbances of juveniles in the area of 901 Second Street shooting fireworks at people in buildings that also uh, brought in reports of people seeing uh, people with guns and what they thought were gunshots. While we were addressing that, uh, there was a call for an overdose, a life safety call uh, that uh, occurred in the area of uh, 8th. Uh, 8th Avenue and 6th Street Southeast. Uh, we had a report that an uh, individual or a male had been seriously injured at a large party. There were reports of hot rodders and assaults and shots being fired, and it required seven SWADs to respond to that situation and to render it uh, safe for medical personnel. Shortly after that, at about 12.30 a.m., we had a stabbing in the area of Chicago and Lake. Uh, where a male had been reported to have been stabbed by seven to eight suspects, and it required approximately six squads to respond to that situation. Again, this timeline is very tight, and as you can see, our resources were being uh, spread across the city into multiple incidents at the same time. We had shooting victims start to arrive at the hospitals. Uh, additionally, uh, around 12.45 a.m. and also at uh, 3 a.m., at around 1, 1 in the morning, uh, the situation was getting more challenging in the area, to like around uh, 2nd and Portland. We had reports of uh, large groups damaging property and shooting. In order to address and to help get uh, this crowd out of the downtown area, uh, we held over all of the entire uh, mid-shift for the, for the city and uh, had every single response car come to the downtown area to begin the process of trying to move this uh, unruly group out of the area, which is a challenging prospect to do in the sense that this group was resistant, uh, did not want to follow any directives, and uh, were also shooting commercial-grade fireworks at first responders. I think the officers did uh, the best job they could in order to uh, restore order to the area in a way that uh, minimized the amount of injury and avoided uh, the reliance on uh, the use of um, what would be considered overwhelming force in order to do so. Keep watching CBS News Minnesota for continuing coverage.